Welcome back to the Object Stacking and Packing tutorial series. I'm your host, Thomas Tobin. If you haven't seen the previous chapters, I recommend going back to find them. In this episode, we will be focused on setting up the tool from scratch and getting the assets set up to be stacked and packed. Hope you enjoy it. Here we go. The very first node we need to put down is a object merge. This object merge will be our data table. I've then promoted this object one to be a parameter of our chart. So if I pop open, I've simply created a parameter and that is this string, same input. And it will simply be where in Unreal Engine, you drag and drop the data table into, as you can see right here. When we drag in our data table correctly, you'll see it brings in three different points, again, relating to the um, rows within our data table. For each point contains all of the information that that data table has. So we can see asset path, that's our path, and our Unreal data table width, length, and height. So the first thing I want to do is just to clean this up, I'm going to set these all to the same position. I'm going to create a attribute wrangle and set their positions to all be zero, zero, zero. So that is at P equals, and then their positions of zero, zero, zero. I'm going to name this uh, set to zero. The next thing I'm going to do is create a bit more human uh, naming to these. And so I can reuse this naming later on um, as I create the objects within Houdini. So you need to put down a attribute rename. I'll put that down. And I've typed out the exact matching names. So you're going to have to match your name from your data table and your new name. Again, because these are point attributes, we're only renaming in the point. The next uh, piece of information I need to use is scale. So we've used, just find it, open up rotation, min scale, max scale, and row structure so we can see all of these columns. Don't need that one and object path, that's fine. So I'm gonna create a second attribute wrangle and we're gonna initialize a scale value. So this is just the conversion to set from Unreal Engine to Houdini scale. So I'm gonna do at scale equals set. And then we're gonna run the function of string to a float of our width value. And we're gonna do the same for height and length. Then we're gonna set scale equals at scale divided by 100. So in this one step, all we're doing is now creating a scale attribute from those values. I'm gonna color these three points uh, randomly according to their Unreal Instance attribute. So they'll all each get a unique color. Connect this in. I'm going to change the color type to random from attribute. So if we go back, we look at our CD value. So each Unreal Instance attribute has a unique color. The next thing I need to do is instance these objects. So we're going to use a copy to point node. And these 
data table layers are going to be our target points to copy to. Then I'm going to connect a box just with the default values of 111. I'm going to zoom out real quickly and look at our copy to points. So you can see we initialized three separate objects and they each have a unique color. Now there'll be one inside, let's see, little pink one. I'm going to pack and instance these objects together. So that is how we've imported roughly their bounding boxes based upon their initial object. Because we don't want to necessarily scatter very high poly objects, uh, this is how you would create a bounding box uh, roughly from the input objects. If we were doing this from another tool, let's say object merge, I'm going to do a quick demonstration. And we had a sphere as our input object. We would be object merging from another DCC. So this is bringing in whatever other object would be your initial size or the object you're scattering to. And it's going to find the bounding box. So that would just be how we find a surface on the top to place objects onto it. But in our instance, we're bringing in just the point value. So we are just creating, instead of bringing in that high poly object and figuring out the bound, we can just go straight into the bounding object from here. Now I'm going to create a switch here, and this is going to be my switch according to if I'm bringing in a tool or a um, objects like high poly objects from another engine. So I'm going to put down a object merge, and this is where, depending on your software, so DCC choice, for example, we could expose zero would be Unreal, and it would use the data table route and any other tool would just be bringing in like we showed with the sphere uh, from something else. Now this object merge, I need to make sure I'm packing the geometry before merging in. And this will allow me to say if we have a box and see um, want test geometry. So for a shader ball, for example, that could be made of separate meshes, it's going to bring this in as one whole object when we use a connectivity node. Because if we, as is, place connectivity down, and we do, say, primitive, look at this. We're going to have 0, 3 objects, whereas when we bring this in through the object merge, I'm going to drag this in and run that connectivity we're going to have a single object. So that's how you differentiate between objects, this connectivity node. So I'm going to place this right after. So if we come in from our Unreal route, we have three different objects, 0, 1, 2. And again, if we come in through any other tools, say Unity or 3ds Max Maya, you will have a single object, depending on how many objects you are merging in. So I'm going to leave this as a basic connectivity node. The next step is unpacking. I'm going to unpack our packed objects from both the sides and stay within Unreal. And we're going to ensure that we transfer all attributes back to this unpacked node. Now the next step we need to do is we need to say how many objects are there total. Uh, a quick way of doing this is promoting up. So we're going to do attribute promote from primitive, where our connectivity was, our class in a sense. And we're going to go to detail. So our promotion uh, method is going to be maximum. I'm going to change a new name and set to max. And I'm going to delete original, turn that off because we still want our original value. So this is now going to be in our detail tab. We have two total objects, but again, it starts from zero. 
So we have three total. And if we switch, this will just show one. Max zero, sorry again, starts from zero. So for this, I'm going to quickly put a high poly out. So in case you were doing a object merge in, you would probably have a null node that comes off here and before any edits would be high poly out. Now, if we did bring in the high poly object, we're going to want to create that bounding size. So I'm gonna run a for loop over this quickly. And we're gonna do for each connected and get rid of that connectivity. And I'm going to do a match size. So this is going to uh, center and just bring the box so that the minimum, it's always on the flat surface for Y and put down a bound node. And I'm going to put down a attribute transfer. So we're going to transfer onto this bounding box pretty much all of the attributes that it had before. So there, there was a quick graphical glitch here, but simply turning on and off the for loop, now we can see each object one by one is being match sized. So placing in the center of the scene and then placing the bottom onto the ground and then creating a bounding box object and transferring all of its previous information onto that bounding box. Now, of course you could bypass this because in Unreal, we were creating this bounding box. However, I'm just gonna have it do this for all objects that come in uh, instead of having another switch node that was linked to this DCC switch. The final object um, that I need to do is I'm going to create or promote in this sense, uh, our connectivity, so each object, uh, how they're connected into a variant. So I'm gonna put down a attribute promote, drag that in, go from primitive to point, and it's named class. I'm going to change this to variant. So now for each point here, it knows I'm this type of variant and I'm going to make sure my single pass is off. So we have our three objects there, which with their unique variant, zero, one, two, all good for me. And I'm going to put down another null node and name this input to scatter. So this pretty much concludes the segment for initializing your object from Unreal Engine and bringing it into Houdini. For the next episode, we will be looking at setting up object packing. Following episodes, we'll look at vertical packing, simulation, and Unreal instancing. See you soon.